Hi, my name's Garmin Apgarth. I am the uh, coordinator for Hackney Cycling Campaign. So I've been the coordinator here for, uh, this is my second year. Lived in Hackney for uh, 15 years approximately. So yeah, I've been involved with cycling um, and cycling infrastructure for most of that time. Excellent, why don't you uh, explain a little bit about the campaign? Sure, so uh, Hackney Cycling Campaign is part of uh, the London-wide London Cycling Campaign where the, the local borough uh, group so each borough in London, 32, have, have uh, a, a, a group for the borough. So we work with the local politicians, local councillors here in Hackney to try to ensure that the infrastructure is as good as it can be, uh, essentially to make sure, you know, to, to uh, enable as many people to cycle as possible. Fantastic, that's great. And what are we going to see today? We're going to go around a few of the LTNs that we've had um, put in place, both, uh, well, the oldest is 50 years old, uh, but we had a, a whole lot of new ones uh, during COVID, so we'll go around to a few of those, um, and maybe a couple of, of main road uh, uh, cycle lanes as well, which we don't do as much of in Hackney, unfortunately. Um, so historically it's been more LTNs and closing roads to, to motor traffic. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we get on. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. Excellent. All right, let's roll. Okay. Yeah. We'll head south. Okay. We'll go to just over the border mm -hmm. into Bethnal Green, okay. uh, Tau Hamlets. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, some re there's a really nice LTN there, but okay. they're, they're going to rip it out. Ah, okay. So, so this is one that uh, is uh, didn't so make the cut. <laughs> it's not. Well, it's not quite on. It's not on our territory as right. as a, you know. Yeah. It's 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 a great LTN. Mm -hmm. There's a big campaign locally to keep it. Okay. But the local politicians want to want to rip it out, despite having spent a lot of money on it, and uh -huh. um, it would take you know cost a lot of money to, to rip it out again. So we'll start start there, we'll and then we'll come yeah, back. Yeah, we'll, we'll north. start there, and, and we'll talk a little bit about you know that challenge yep. of dealing with um, you know the resistance to change, and when the local politicians sort of like cave in to the the loudest complaining voices. Absolutely, yes, that's an <laughs> ongoing challenge. Yes, fantastic. All right, let's roll. Yeah, so Hackney has had kind of the highest uh, cycling proportion uh, of any London borough for, for quite a long time. Um, so there's been campaigns to, uh, to improve cycling you know, I don't know how long, but 40, 50 years. Right. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot higher proportion historically in Hackney than elsewhere. Right. With better, better kind of infrastructure for, for quieter streets. Mm -hmm. um, but then other boroughs have caught up yeah. a little bit now, so uh, which is good to see. But obviously we want, we want Hackney to to push ahead and uh, be out there and demonstrate what the best can be. And I've had the opportunity to roll through this park a couple of times this week. And it's one of the things that I like to point out is that uh, cities can take the opportunity to leverage a green space, a park like this, and some of the, uh, the waterways uh, to, you know, be part of the cycling network. It doesn't all have to be you know infrastructure right along motorways right and that you know that's uh, often an easy win obviously we have to be careful with that as well we don't we have to be aware of the pedestrians and uh, oh most definitely some and of these places can be narrow this one is is nice and wide so it's yeah that's the point i make is yeah. that you know if you're going to do this if you're going to have a mixed use make it wide and, and cities oftentimes ask me well how wide and i say wider wider yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever you think is wide enough Wider than that. And this, this is a particularly uh, busy one as well. Yeah. Um, you know, on a nice day, or if it's busy with commuters, but it's also busy on the weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the London waterways is probably more of a tricky situation. Yes. Um, they are well, very well used for, with cyclists, but it is very narrow. So yes. it's not an ideal, yeah. ideal place. And we do try, if possible, to, uh, to encourage parallel um, Encourage parallel routes right. for that as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is Broadway Market. It's the market day today, so we won't be able to cycle down there. Yep. It is part of the cycle way. So, but there's a market on Saturday and Sunday, so you can't can't cycle down there on the weekend. 
So ideally, we would have a, another spur of it off here, right. but, uh, but we'll go down there. But it would be nice to make this official as well. And I've also seen where we've, we've, we've got some uh, kids here riding as well and... Uh, off to football, I think? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's encouraging to see. I noticed that this morning that, you know, there's been an awful lot of, uh, of kids out riding. And it's really, really wonderful to see that. Yeah, well, I should have, uh, we just, the school we just went past there is a school street. Uh -huh. It was one of the, if not the first school street in Hackney, um, which we campaigned for. Uh, and the idea there is to restrict motor traffic from, uh, from the entrances of the schools right. uh, at pick up and drop off time. Right. So it's kind of an hour in the morning, an hour in the evenings. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, it just makes such a difference. My kids are primary school age. Um, now I'm just, just moving up to secondary school. Right. Um, but yeah, it made such a difference just having them, um, not, not having the motor traffic, the noise and the stress outside the school right. on drop off time. It was just, it was transform transformational. And that's one thing that Hackney really did take, uh, take on um, at speed after starting. We kind of started, I can't remember what year it was, maybe mm -hmm. coming up to 10 years ago. Okay. Say, turn right. Um, but now every, I think it's every primary school in Hackney pretty much, except the ones right on a major road, okay. um, are now uh, do have a school street. Fantastic. And there's a handful, handful of secondary schools that also have them. Um, so that's the next kind of stage right. for that particular project is to is to inc include more secondary schools okay. uh, there as well. But yeah, it just makes a big difference in terms of just just that nice, quiet, peaceful time at the beginning of the day. Right. And uh, the the Hackney definition or interpretation of a school street is what? It's actually uh, so it's not physically cut off, but there's just signs that go up. Um, to say that it's closed for an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon. Okay. Take left here. Okay. This is the Catamaran Bridge, which was closed off during COVID, uh, and then Broadway Market was pedestrianised just behind us. Uh -huh. So this was a big, a big change. Um, this would have been very, very busy with motor <laughs> traffic previously. Um, so this was one of the controversial ones uh, that went in in, in 2020, um, but made such a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, so the buses can go through. You can see that there's a yeah. bus stop right, um, right on the bridge. Um, looks like, there we go. He's, he's turning, turning, turning right to avoid it. Okay. Yeah, so that's, uh, there's a camera to take the registration numbers Got it. of cars going through. Okay. Uh, we will take a left down here. Okay, very good. Excellent. We've got our little, Green light. Now, unfortunately, we've shown some of the good stuff. Unfortunately, on this road, Whiston Road, last year, a uh, female cyclist was killed, um, which is uh, obviously terrible. And it coincided with another death of a cyclist kind of within the same month. Um, so yeah, we, it's just obviously very, hard to take especially when it's so close to home um, and a reminder that we still got a lot to do right yeah, yeah for sure yeah going back to seeing the children out getting around to meaningful destinations it's kind of that that old saying that you know when you see women and children out it's like the indicator species of a safer cycling environment. Absolutely, and they, we bought a uh, cargo bike, well, a, a Dutch style kind of cargo bike for, <coughs> uh, to take our kids around about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. And at that time, whenever we took out, we got looks and kind of, you know, people were noticing us. Yeah. Now, you yeah. see those kind of bikes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a, such a big change, so yeah, yeah. you, you definitely see a lot of kids cycling with their parents 
either by themselves or on adapted bikes. Yeah. But it's funny, I was speaking to a friend last week and he took his cargo bike to West London and said he got the same looks, yeah. you know, that we used to get kind of 10 years ago yeah, yeah. Um, out there. So, you know, there are bits of the city that are much better for cycling than others and, and have, you know, have developed um, more of an acceptance or um, it's just become a lot more common. Right. And it's a little bit of a reminder too that everybody is somewhere on this continuum. Yeah, that's right. And it's really interesting because um, maybe we'll just stop up here. If, yeah. uh, that's all right. Um, yeah, it's interesting because we have, because each borough in London, you know, geographically pretty small, yeah. but they all have different council, different leaders, uh, different approaches, different yeah. parties in power. So, you know, they take very different approaches. And that's, right. that's basically what, um, what makes, makes a difference in terms of cycling, uh, the, the proportion of people cycling, essentially. Yeah. So we've just crossed the border from Hackney um, into Tower Hamlets. Okay. This, uh, this was put in, so this is old Bethnal Green Road. Okay. So this was a road five years ago uh, with thousands of, of cars going down each day. Um, and the Labour administration pre-2022 put this, put this in. Um, and you can see just looking down left how wide, you know, the road was and what a difference it, it, it has made. Yeah. So, yeah, this was kind of a very busy motor traffic road and now you can just, I mean, yeah, I'll be quiet and you can just hear it. Yeah, and, and, and for, for those, you know, seeing here on the video, it is starting to rain uh, relatively steadily, not too heavy, but um, I'm, I'm sure there would be much more activity here if it were a bright and sunny morning. This is a Saturday morning, but even still, you, you look at all, of, all the folks out here, and to your point, it's so quiet now. So quiet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was a big, big fight to put this in. Unfortunately, pretty much as soon as it was built, I can't remember exactly how much it cost, but you know, it's done into a really good degree. It's not just, um, it's not just uh, temporary infrastructure. Um, and it, but as, as soon as it was put in borough-wide, uh, a different party was elected in, and they were elected in on a saying that they would rip out all the LTN throughout the borough. Right. So essentially returning this into a, into a really busy uh, traffic-filled street um, it has two schools on it. Maybe we'll go past them mm -hmm. on the other end. Um, all the, the, the head teachers, uh, local GPs, even local businesses have got together and you know, made petitions and mm -hmm. take, taken the council to court um, to try to keep it in, um, to, to argue that it, the process hasn't been done properly and, and right. you know, that essentially would be a waste of taxpayers' money to rip all this out again sure. and spend more money doing it. Um, and you know, with the with the associated negative associations with health and well-being around that as well. So that's that's where this particular uh, project is. But yeah, it's kind of it's it's done so nicely. It's so such a good project, and yet it's still within. You know, it's still up for discussion and the possibility of it being being ripped out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose that you know, if there is a bright side to this is that the status quo of having the infrastructure in place um, does provide a certain amount of advantage and we experience this every single day on our roadways and on our streets where the status quo is auto domination and so we know that that status quo of what's in in place Absolutely. and on the ground right now is hard to change so the fact that it is built, the fact that it's built in such a high quality way, like you had m mentioned, it's beautifully done. It, it's not necessarily the lighter, quicker, cheaper materials of a pilot project. Yeah. Uh, this was really well done. And so one would think that there's a certain amount of, of staying power. And, and again, this is the reason why we do it. I mean, we're able to create 
an environment that is safer for all ages and abilities. And that's the whole point. Absolutely. And it just provides that, you know, that option. People wouldn't have the option of cycling along here. It just that would, it, you know, it, it was a horrible road to cycle on um, and people didn't cycle on it, yeah. you know. And now, as, as you've just seen, people going past with their kids in the rain um, and people just wouldn't do that previously. Yeah. You used a magical word there, options. Options, yeah, options. absolutely. Yes. You know, it's, people say, oh, you, you know, you're taking away my option for driving. It's not about taking away an option of driving. It's about providing the option of, of yeah. doing something else and with the added benefit that, you know, it's, it's more peaceful, the added benefit of the health aspect of it. Um, and most people don't um, own a car in London, in Tower Hamlets and Hackney. Mm -hmm. It's something like 30% of the uh, of households who have access to a car. Ah, yeah. So, you know, you have 70% of people who can't just jump in a car. Yeah. Um, and if those 70% of people did have a car, then there would be absolute gridlock, right? Yeah. So it's just not feasible. So these kind of things, you know, yes, there will be challenges to individual um, schemes and maybe in individual boroughs, but mm -hmm. overall, I think it's only going to go one way so yeah. yeah it's interesting too we we deal with this globally of where you know there is resistance to change which is very much a human behavior type of thing uh when you when you see it change you know from what used to be that which is essentially an auto sewer yeah, yeah. <laughs> to this um yes there, there's naturally a, a resistance to change but at the same time, um, I think it's really important to understand that the majority of the people are somewhere in between. Yes. They're neither you know, adamantly against nor enthusiastically for the change. Absolutely. It's just that there's that middle ground. A, a substantial majority of the population is just kind of, they're, they're busy doing their own thing. They're busy living life. And then they kind of you know, end up swaying one way or the other. In this case, it sounds like, you know, when you, where you've got a majority of non-drivers in the actual borough, in the actual area, um, we've got some very loud, mm -hmm. maybe some very powerful voices that are car-centric and, and have some political power at this point in time. But that's a precarious thing, too, because if, if that much of the majority would be supportive of this type of environment and infrastructure, that could be political suicide too. I yeah, I think so. And and also just in London, we've almost got a perfect experiment going going on because mm -hmm. boroughs have their different um, you know powers to, to do things differently. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have Hackney, who've got a high proportion of LTNs. Mm -hmm. Islington have been building up theirs mm -hmm. um, over the past few years. They've got a couple of good projects, hopefully going in as well. Uh, Waltham Forest. Uh, who have in the south at least have you know plastered their borough with LTNs and cycle lanes as well. So you have this arch of arc of um, you know really quite good things happening, and then you've got the city of London as well, mm -hmm. um, and even Newham are doing things. So you've got a big swathe of East London doing really nice things, and you've got Tower Hamlet who's saying they're going to rip things out and not put anything new in. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be you know give it a few years. Yeah. you're going to see a real difference, you know, and like I said, geographically, it's very, very small. So, you know, any trip, you, you inevitably go through different boroughs yeah. and you're going to notice it. You know, you're going to notice it both in the enjoyment of cycling and walking around. And you're going to just, you know, you, and you're going to notice it in, in cycling levels uh, ultimately. So, yeah. yeah, we'll, you know, we're going to find the best best way in one way or the other. And this is, you know, a perfect experiment to, to find out what people prefer yeah and to our point earlier when we were referencing you know women and children being part of the indicator species of a more comfortable all ages and, and abilities environment when we say cycling we're not we're not talking about quote unquote the cyclist the typical stereotypical cyclist the dude in lycra out for a sport ride we're just talking about you know mobility options getting that word back in mobility options for you know the majority of the population that could really you know benefit from shorter trips that could be made by you know what i like to call 
pedestrian plus, <laughs> you, know, well, you know, being able to just do that, that, you know, that, that mile long, mile and a half yeah. long, two mile, three mile trip yeah. without having to feel like you have to get in a car or, uh, you know, get on the time schedule of, of like transit. Abs absolutely. Yeah. And most people, you know, most people in London, yeah. they, they walk. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, the most, most people are already walking and this kind of scheme provides such a nicer place to walk. Yeah. You know, you, it's not about forcing people, every, everyone onto a bike. Yeah. You know, a lot of trips that you, you know, even going on a bike, maybe it's too, you know, it's easier just to walk yeah. or, or you're walking to the, uh, to the tube station or, or, or the bus station. So, um, yeah, it's not just about cycling. It's also just providing nicer places to be yeah. um, and, and places to pass through as well. Speak to a, a little bit of that that identity challenge too, of um, a tension that exists between pedestrian people who never get on a bike and then people who you know walk, but they also will make some trips by bike, um, and then but the perception of oh this is cycling infrastructure this is only for those sport and recreation folks. You know, there's a tension there. There's a misperception of of. I of think that. I think there is. Um, maybe not as much in London as other places, mm -hmm. um, because most you know most people they go on a bike in order to get to work, right? Mm -hmm. You don't drive into central London. Sure. Um, that would just be, you know, <laughs> majority of people would be completely uh, a stupid thing to do. That sure. Just, but so you don't have that. But what you do have, yeah, that what boroughs can do. Uh, and what Hackney has done is to build LTNs, and that is—it's it's obviously wider. It's you know, mm -hmm. low traffic neighbourhood. Right. It provides maybe ten different way streets, you know, right. uh, that are done in in one go. And those are the kind of things that enable those local uh, journeys to take place because yeah. you know it's not about necessarily getting to one place, you know, the start of a cycle lane to the end of a cycle lane. Yeah. Uh, it's about providing, you know, from your front door to the school, to yeah. the GP, to the shop. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so that's, there's, there's obviously a place for both um, and there's a need for, need for both. Um, but just having the cycle lanes, which are, you know, just kind of high quality without having the local um, infrastructure in place mm -hmm. will only get you so far and would inevitably favour the kind of the commute and the, you know, the more kind of longer distance rides yeah. rather than the shorter shorter neighborhood rides yeah yeah brilliant well we've waited out the rain yeah so. well at least this portion of it Yeah, Tower Hamlets took a different approach, um, like you mentioned, when they put these in to Hackney originally, mm -hmm. in that they put them in in high quality and obviously it costs a lot more, whereas Hackney um, initially just did it in much uh, more temporary um, materials, uh, flower pots on the, on the road and, you yeah, uh, know, kind of... And I think maybe, maybe that was because Tower Hamlets knew their position politically was more um, precarious. Right. Whereas Hackney is kind of very, very solidly uh, Labour, so okay. um, very unlikely that they would get voted out. And actually, in large parts of the borough, the pressure from Labour is from the Green Party. Okay. So, you know, they would obviously go go further as well so or they support the LTNs as well so the kind of political pressure from Labour and at least in south of Hackney right. is to uh, is to go further with this kind of yeah. kind of thing um, that's probably different in the north or areas of the north of the borough but um, yeah whereas Tower Hamlet is obviously a switched in the in the previous uh, local elections uh, with the new mayor coming in um, but yeah, there's a very strong local campaign. They've raised, you know, tens of thousands of pounds and taken them to the, uh, taken the uh, council to a judicial review. 
Um, so there's, there's been a lot of work done locally to, to keep this kind of infrastructure and make sure that it doesn't just return to what it was. Yeah, it's, uh, it brings up the point that honestly, this stuff shouldn't be a political issue in the sense that, you know, across the entire political spectrum, having safe places to live and less pollution, less noise, <laughs> more like, mobility choices exactly. should actually be. Exactly, and this is the school I mentioned. So this is the secondary school, which, you know, so you'll see thousands of kids walking, cycling along here, yeah. you know, every morning, um, just around the corner, they block this off um, as part of the scheme. Yeah. Um, so it just, you know, transformed overnight from yeah. somewhere that you really wouldn't want to be. Yeah. And now this pub on the corner, the bird cage, has this nice, beautiful outside yeah. space, which oh, is, yeah. you know, busy <laughs> um, on the weekends. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's madness to think about taking out. Yeah, I think I, I rolled past there earlier this week. It was brilliant. So this is the uh, C13, which is um, basically comes from Hackney into into the city. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is Columbia Road, which is um, which is the flower market on the Sunday. Okay. Uh, famous flower market in London. It, it's certainly improved a lot since they put in the restrictions on kind of both ends of the of the streets. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I, I rolled past this uh, birdcage uh, earlier this week, and uh, it was it was right at quitting time, and so it was it was absolutely vibrant. You know, the folks were were there, all the bike racks were full, and uh, yeah, you just got the sense that, especially you, you look at the, the the quality of treatment of the pavers that we have over here. Uh, and then the flowers that you see over there, and you see some cuts in the curbs so that they are actually, you know, they're a true rain garden uh, and they're, you know, helping soak up some of the storm water. Uh, these are the types of things that we're talking about. You look at the, the richness in terms of housing behind you as well, and you see that, you know, this is just making streets for people. Right, absolutely. And, you know, one of the big, Criticisms of LTNs uh, from the opponents is, you know, what they say is, is, is for kind of the posher houses in, in between and for richer people. And that's just not the case, you know, especially in, in Hackney. We've done, you know, there's been research into it, but you can just see it when walking, ri walking and riding around. You know, there are big estates um, like these that benefit directly from it. Yeah. Um, you know, social housing right in the middle. You know, London doesn't doesn't exist as a you know uh, area for po or within a borough it's not it's not yeah. you know people live side by side and if you benefit a road you know you benefit people who are renting there you benefit um, social housing and yeah some nice streets also benefit but yeah. it's uh, it's not you know it, it's not an us and them kind of situation far from it yeah 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 I just can't help but say it again that these streets are just so comfortable uh, you know, it's it's nice to, to not have, you know, an auto sewer through a place like this. Absolutely, you know, and there's two, I mean, I think we, you know, they should really remove the parking here and, and pedestrianize it properly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful street. And yeah, on Sundays, you know, it's, it's completely taken over by the, by the flower market. Yeah. But on other days, it's not as busy as it yeah. could be, I think, if, if, they, if they pedestrianized it. Um, which is what happened at Brewery Market, Broader Market, which we couldn't go past um, earlier, uh, was a through route um, before the pandemic. It changed in 2020 or 2021. Yeah. And there's just absolutely no way that anyone would take that back to what it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, you had pavements um, that cars parked and drove along um, to get out of the way. And, and now it's just, you know, you can still do your deliveries there, you can still go and park there, but yeah. it's just completely transformed. We'll go right, sorry. So we're heading back up to Hackney Road now. So Hackney starts again on the other side. This is the boundary. Um, and this is, this is Queensbridge Road, which is one of the, one of the few, uh, kind of segregated cycle lanes in Hackney. 
Okay, yeah, good. Ah, yeah, I see it here. So essentially they just removed the parking here and put, put this uh, beautiful smooth cycle lane on. Right. Um, again, I think it was 2020 when it was actually done, it was approved before. But you can see the cross, you know, uh, routes as well. Um, so, you know, a really good example of combining LTNs, a good crossing over a major road and cycle lanes along a major road. Um, so this is, this is what we want to see more of. Yes, yeah, for sure. And on the left here is a big secondary school. You'll see all the bike parking in there as well. And then on the other side is um, Hagston Park and sports grounds and yeah. Yeah, beautiful marriage between this, you know, protected, separated infrastructure. For those on camera here, you can see there's a little bit of a lip between the bikeway and the pedestrian realm, the pavements there. And then it's a, about a three to four, maybe five inch curb uh, between the cycle lane and the road bed, the travel lane for motor vehicles. So it's nice having that little curb protection. Yeah, yeah, it makes a big difference. And that's it, we're done. <laughs> They're working on this junction as we speak. Yeah. Um, so it will, it will extend to the north as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it doesn't, you know, you, we don't have the kind of junctions that the Netherlands would take for granted, you know, which is, uh, which is really what we need to get to. You'll see they're digging up the road there. Yeah. And there's a new pedestrian, um, pedestrian crossing here as well, uh, which will be switched on in a few weeks time. Um, so again, and this will provide a, a separate kind of option as we were speaking, talking earlier about the canal. We just went over the canal, which is really busy, but having those kind of crossings will provide a, a route for cycling, which is parallel to the canal, but not, not on the towpath. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hopefully, yeah, relieve some of the pressure on, on the towpath for pedestrians. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the lanes will extend all the way up here. Okay. We're essentially between two LTNs here as well. So this, again, this, this uh, separ se separated lane on the main road will, will separate two, two LTNs. Right. Um, so you have the kind of, yeah, the connection between them. And we see some uh, more interim materials here, the lighter yes. flex posts, sort of. Yeah, so they were put in place. They've been in place for maybe three or four years. Yeah. And now they're being kind of upgraded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when the money allows. Right, yeah. I like to refer to these as real estate saving devices. You're, you're preserving the future infrastructure which will go in place. It's an interim step. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And we'll take a left here. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's my neighbor ahead of us. Oh, fabulous. Nice little uh, Christiana style front box bike. And again, as soon as we get off of the main street, we can hear the birds yeah, and so the wind. <laughs> and the wind. So what we're doing now is we're going through a really nice um, square, Albion Square. It itself was made essentially closed off. I don't know when, probably 40 or 50 years, probably the same time as De Beauvoir, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, so there's been no through traffic here for a long, long time. Um, but then this was kind of made part of the, of the bigger London Fields LTN. Yeah. Um, not that everyone was happy about it, but uh, I don't think many people would re reverse it now. And some nice wildflowers there. Yeah. And again, th this is a great example, just to pausing for a second, uh, especially with a lot of the concern with um, trying to depave and create a more green environment for nature, being able to have a rain garden like this, being able to channel some of the stormwater into 
feed those wildflowers. I mean, it's an important beautification thing, but it's yeah. also good for the environment too. Yeah, it is. And we've had, you know, we've had kind of localized flooding um, over the last couple of years in, in Hackney, you know, which, you know, the rains, as we know, are get, getting um, heavier in shorter bursts and, you know, mm -hmm. the, overwhelming the, the, the kind of uh, the drainage system. So yeah, the more, the more of this you can put in to, to stop that flow and to slow that flow down, the, the better it's got to be. Yeah, and I, and I think what is brilliant on this again is that it adds that beauty touch to it too. So now we've got an infrastructure where you're not just using the lighter, quicker, cheaper materials. You're able to use some nice solid uh, bollards here. You've got nice pavers and then you have a beautiful garden too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and some of this stuff has been in for, for many decades. Yeah. You know, and people wouldn't, you wouldn't, they wouldn't think that this yeah. used to be a road. Right. You could drive past, you know, no yeah. one would go back to that. Once it's in place, once it's built out like this, yeah. made, made to look like it's always been there. Yeah. Well, yeah. my point exactly is that, you know, as humans, we have a hard time with change, but we also adapt incredibly yes. fast. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We sometimes forget that. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it seems like the end of the world. We can't drive the way we used to drive. And then it's like, ah, yeah, I got over it. Yeah. Yeah, you find a new route and it's not as bad as you thought it might be. Yeah. Okay, Straight brilliant. Shoulders. I stopped us. We will you go to uh, to De Beauvoir um, LTN, which is the first uh, that we kind of know of in London, 50 years old this year. Oh, so, brilliant. Yeah. Let's do it. So the road we're coming to is Middleton Road, which is part mm -hmm. of um, one of the cycleways. It used to be called, uh, there was a program, 10, years ago of sight of quiet ways okay in london to kind of differentiate between the kind of fast um purpose built right. uh, routes and more quiet side routes ah, so okay. this was um called quiet way ah, okay. two it's now cycleway 27 i think yeah um but yeah so this this goes to london fields where we started off okay um, and this is a, again a really busy route. It takes you to takes you through Islington um, and then uh, into Bloomsbury in central London and into Camden. Um, so yeah, very busy with uh, commuters during the week. Right. Yeah, I do recall seeing some of the quiet way signs. Signage. Yeah, and yeah. You, you could tell they were a little older signs. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So crossing over Kingsman Road and essentially into De Beauvoir LTN. So this is De Beauvoir Square. And again, it's just to the point that you will, you wouldn't find anyone advocating to rip this out. Right. It's been in for 50 years. You know, you could, In looking at the historical context of like when this was built, clearly they didn't call it an LTN. No. Well, what, what did they call it, if anything? I have no idea. This was built obviously way before my time, yeah. but it did come about after a lot of protests mm -hmm. um, in the area. Right. Um, so there were, there were protests that, that led to the change. Yeah. I'm not sure who the politicians were or, you know, what they had in mind exactly, but, um, but yeah, they put it in place. There was, there was protests against it at the yeah. same time. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a case of being able to do it. Right. Um, but yeah, it goes kind of, you know, it's not, a, it's not a huge square, but it's a good yeah. block of, um, good block of the area. Yeah. Um, kind of three, three, Three blocks up and maybe two blocks across. Right. Uh, so oh, wow, yeah, and this is interesting because if we turn, yeah, stop we can and stop here. pause this here, kind of the, the this is kind of fun. Center of it. Um, yeah, I just want to reflect on the fact that this is literally a been created into a, a plaza. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, and there's more, there's probably more you could do to kind of uh, make use of this space, but 
you know, they haven't come back and, and done much uh, in terms of adding rain gardens and things. Having said that, there are very mature trees everywhere and, you know, yeah. nice big front gardens. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's on it's On this side, we can see that we've got some new pavers on the, on yes. the pavement there. And so that, that particular sidewalk has been redone up to this point where you see some of the, the asphalt that's in place. But yeah, we see this huge um, opportunity area when we look at you know just the the vastness of this central square which with the bollards all the way around this really could be a public square this could be an, an amazing amenity you know to yeah. the neighborhood yeah um i'm almost a little bit surprised there we haven't seen some pop-up uh, planters and <laughs> and whatnot uh from folks to you know kind of take control of it yeah there have been kind of bits they've done around the the edges mm -hmm. uh, so we passed passed through some uh, nice ones by the church there mm -hmm. and there's a new kind of pocket park they put up um just just yeah. down one of the side roads as well Fair recently does. So there are little bits, but yeah, you, they, they, more could be done with this. Yeah. It is a, obviously a very residential area. Sure. But in terms of your point, in terms of how much space there is, yeah. if this was, you know, if there were cars parked on both sides all the way around here and cars yeah. going through the middle, you wouldn't notice how big a space it was. Right. You know, it just feels yeah. so much bigger because of the absence of, you know, the, yeah. the kind of metal, metal uh, boxes that, that were on most streets. Yeah, the absence um, of, of metal boxes is a, is a good way to, to put it. Yeah. This is also, you know, they took advantage of this to create the uh, cy uh, cycleway one, mm -hmm. C1, which, um, which is kind of the major cycleway in Hackney that goes from north to south. Okay. Um, and so, you know, they kind of tried to, to, to use existing uh, quieter streets for that. Right. There was a big um, debate and argument at the time over whether the cycleway should have gone on the main road or mm -hmm. on the side roads. Um, eventually, they decided to, to go on the side roads. Mm -hmm. I think we, we need both, essentially. Right. Yeah. You I know. mean, that's the correct answer is, yeah, you yeah. need both. Ultimately, what's going to be more pleasant for, you know, a small child and, you know, probably the quieter streets. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the quieter streets, both. but you still need both. And, <laughs> yes. you know, still a lot of cyclists do yeah. use the main road. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Because it's, you yes. know, because it's faster, because it's direct, right. because of course. that's yeah. where you know. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know, if you don't know the area, of course, you're going to stick to the main streets. Because Well, and, and it's also, you may have a destination along one of those main streets. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, need, you need both. Yeah. Um, but it was when it was built, it was kind of, you know, that was the approach that Hackney as yeah. a cycling campaign at the time and also as a borough yeah. uh, had been taken for uh, a couple of decades. And so that's what they, they kind of camp campaigned and, um, and built. Um, it has its good bits. It has bits that are not, not so good and that sure, still, sure. still require, you know, additional uh, work even 10 or 15 years later. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a slog. There's kind of, you go... We'll, we'll go along it, um, but you go to some good place, you know, places like this where mm -hmm. you feel completely safe and then yeah. then there's crossings that are not so good. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. And that's, that's one of the biggest challenges, right, with any of these, uh, you know, bicycle priority streets or low traffic, you know, neighborhood types of streets. When you intersect with one of those major roads, yes. you've <clears throat> got to be able to cross them safely. We saw some wonderful treatments, you know, as we were rolling along that protected bikeway, yep. you know, off to the left and off to the right. We saw some, you know, interactions with some uh, modal filters and some permeability and some low traffic uh, neighborhood installations, you know, helping to facilitate, you know, that. But yeah, getting across these major roadways is a challenge. It is, um, and that's actually one of the campaigns that we've been uh, trying to trying to get in front of the council this past mm -hmm. year or so, is to focus on those areas because we have um, we have a lot of LTNs in in Hackney now. Mm -hmm. So the next stage is obviously we need to put them in in the yeah. areas where they're not, but we also you know if we can kind of if we can improve the the crossings over the major roads from one LTN to the next, mm -hmm. that's where. Um, you know, one of our campaigns yeah. is focused on at the minute because, yeah. yeah, obviously, you know, if you can only get to the main road, then you're not going to let your, you know, 
your child go on there, yeah, even yeah. if the streets are safe yeah, um, yeah. to there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the crossing as well, it's the junction it's the that we need well. to focus on. On that note, mm -hmm. um, you'll see the traffic uh, works just up there. That's yeah. a crossing that they're just improving right now. So, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the cycleway, in fact, is closed because they're working on that crossing. Be yeah. because they're cl it should, I think it should be finished. I haven't been there for yeah, yeah. Uh, a few days. I think yeah. it's pretty much done. Fantastic. Uh, so maybe just go up there and have a look at that and then go back along C1. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that sounds great. And we've had just a constant stream of, of humanity um, strolling oh, yeah. and rolling past us yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, you know, this is, um, this is quiet for this stretch. Yeah. You know, if, if you come um, either during commute time mm -hmm. or school time, then it's it's very very busy, and yeah. it'll be busier um, during the later during the day as well. But yeah, it's it's pretty constant. I don't know. The, it would be good to know the numbers along here. Yeah. Um, but, well, you yeah. mentioned 50 years ago when this got established uh, that. You know, there were some protests involved in terms in terms of wanting to, to do this, and, and that you know part of the initiative. Yeah. Memory serves. There were a lot of different protests around the globe right around that time. I mean, in 1972, 1973, in the Netherlands, uh, of course, we we saw the protests uh, uh, stop the child mort, yeah. uh, the, the kinder mort, uh, and you know stop the child murder. And so, really, that was a pivotal point for many places of trying to claw back space for people because we had kind of ceded it over to the automobile post-World War II. Yes, I don't know what it is about this particular area that led to those protests mm -hmm. and led to this being implemented. Yeah. Because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't wider scale. It wasn't, yeah. right, this is the first of many. Yeah. This is built, and then they forgot. It's, it's so you know, cool. It'd be really interesting know. to see yeah. what you know. Who who had the gumption to say, "We need to do this." There's a good blog so, post yeah. um, by Hackney Cyclist yeah. uh, on this, so it's worth uh, yeah. We'll having have a look to at we'll, that. we'll have to include Splash that link uh, to, to the um, video. Yeah. yeah, you know, why did it happen just here? Yeah. Why didn't it happen yeah. elsewhere? Why well, and it could have, it and the protest could have happened elsewhere. I mean, Peter Norton, um, in his book *Fighting Traffic*, yeah. talks about the context of, like, in the United States, literally, you pick a decade. Every single decade, parents uh, were were trying to fight for sa safer streets, and in some cases, those uh, they won. Yeah. Sometimes it was a block by block battle, yeah. and then in other cases, they didn't win, and yeah. motordom won. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, in the Netherlands, they kind of won on a bigger scale, and you know. Broader, yeah. Whereas, whereas here is, it seems to be individual streets, yeah. um, but not wider than that. So, and and to be clear too, it was a confluence of many different protests happening yes. at the same time. Uh, the the other protests that were going along in the Netherlands during the kin de Kindermort protests were also uh, the Green Movement uh, protest was also happening and the oil at the price time. Shock, the right? oil shock yeah. happened at the same time. So it was a multitude of things yeah. that yeah. sort of. Um, caused the Danes and the Dutch both to sort of like say, yeah, do this, we want to be addicted to oil? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And, and do we want our streets to be safer for all ages and yeah. abilities? And, and that became, began the transformation. And it was slow. I mean, it, it didn't really manifest to what we know now as the, you know, the Utrechts and the Amsterdams yeah. of today, yeah. you know, until many decades later. And I think there's, there's some of that you can feel happening now with mm -hmm. um you know with air pollution um there's there's definite increase in awareness yes over you know air pollution and the the need for clean air essentially um well and yeah and you, in in here in the the london area you yeah. literally have yeah. the, the 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 low emission zones yes uh type of uh, scheme as well yeah absolutely yeah. so that that was brought in last year for the for outer mm -hmm. To cover the whole of London, mm -hmm. it, it would it covered this area previously, mm -hmm. but um, but there were big bigger protests when it covered out of London, mm -hmm. and those those protests against the uh, ULES, the ultra ultra mm -hmm. low emission zone, are still continuing. You yeah, know, you still have people going around trying to cut down the the cameras. Yeah, um, for that. So yeah, they kind of um, there's still a protest against it, mm -hmm. but um, but you know. The mayor was re-elected last month right, um, right. with an increased majority, yeah. you know, having having brought it in. So yeah. 
It was it, a it reminds me of uh, reminds me of the story of uh, Mayor Hildago in Paris. Absolutely. The same thing. She yes. was like, "We're going to do this. We're yeah. going to do some bold moves. Yeah. We are going to decouple the automobile addiction that Paris has. We've got a problem when we can't even see the Eiffel Tower right. through the smog." Yep. And she ran on that campaign. She got reelected you know, widely by a wide majority, and she continues to transform Paris. Yes, and it certainly has transformed. We were there last year and it was mm -hmm. completely different to yeah. our previous visits. But yeah, so yeah, these things can happen, you know, we can, we can make that change and it's, uh, and it's a better city for it. Yeah. All right, let's continue on. Yeah, Love it. and there you see the kid on the back yeah. of an electric bike, a line bike, and an old lady on there. Yeah. On an analog bike, just going about their pace. All in, in one quick image, Absolutely. the all ages and abilities. <laughs> yeah, and you would just never have that on the main road. Yeah. You know, without, without protection. So. Yeah, yeah. And well, the even, other thing, even with protection? Even with you, protection. You may not even yeah. want to be, you no, know, be, no. might not want to be uh, sucking down that, uh, that exhaust. And right here, look at the trees in this one. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what I'm surprised that that yeah, intersection yeah, wasn't. Why, why haven't they put that in the bigger, yeah. bigger infrastructure? I'm not sure. I wonder if there was. Uh, I noticed that some, many of those bollards were removable, and so I wonder if there's a little bit of uh, uh, preserving the ability for emergency vehicles to get through there. I've never seen them moved. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not yeah. sure. Let's jump off here, and yeah, yeah, this is just the example of. Boom. They're um, working on this right now. Improving the crossing. Fantastic. And you can see the high quality stonework that's going in, the pavers. We've got yeah. our tactile for the crossing here. Very nice. Oh yeah, you're right, this is very close to being done. So this was a, uh, this was a route, now this is a new LTN that was put in in 2020, I think, 2021. Okay. Um, and now, you know, there were, um, yeah, so for a few years there wasn't anything permanent, it was kind of temporary temporary stuff, and now they're coming in, this will obviously be planting um, all around it. Uh, and with a uh, cyclist priority across the, the bigger road. Yeah, and we do have a cafe here, a restaurant here. Yeah. And so because we, we have the, the cafe here too, you notice that we also have uh, through some of the space that was created here with the planters, we've got some bike parking racks, the bike racks all the way around. So really taking that opportunity to, to maximize the utilitarian nature of the space that was created, uh, you know, for bike parking, helping these businesses out, these cafes out. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and there's, yeah, there's thousands of cyclists go up and down here. Mm -hmm. um, previously, it was a, a mini roundabout, mm -hmm. which was often ignored by, um, by drivers going east-west. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's gonna be a, a zebra crossing with a parallel mm -hmm. um, crossing for, for cyclists. So cyclists will have priority over this junction um, when it opens. So yeah, it looks very, very close to being, being ready, doesn't it? Yeah, it uh, sure does. Should, should be ready by the end of the month, maybe. Yeah, and, and I'll just point out too, once again, that you know, really high quality, you know, stone uh, going in here, nice granite, um, just well done. Love it. Yeah. So this is actually the border uh, with Is Islington. So mm -hmm. we're now in Islington. Um, so yeah, we've been to the, bo the southern border. This is the border with Islington, and uh, we'll. So we head back into Hackney and very good. Yeah, go let's up do it. North again. Uh -huh. And there's the deli across the street too. Yeah, and you know more, more greenery to go in. And do you think they'll improve this crossing to be uh, yes, a, a smoother yeah. and, and lay, it's clearly going to be elevated? It'll be uh, elevated. Yeah, and it, it's, you can see the elevation over here comes up to yeah. to this level. Yeah. yeah. And this will be a zebra. Um, yeah. Crossing. Yeah. yeah. So line bikes are an interesting uh, development over the last few years as well. Yeah. So you see there, they are all parked quite nicely in a um, yeah. in a designated parking bay. Yeah. That's not always the case. Right. And that's uh, obviously been um, the biggest kind of criticism of them. Sure. Um, is that you know they get in the way pedestrians? They they're just parked. Sure. Wherever. And we don't need that sort of conflict. No, to absolutely. continue between 
people walking and people riding a bike. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. So, you know, but the, uh, well, I know Lime are keen to, uh, to minimize that and to, to have more uh, designated areas for bikes to go. We'll yeah. Take a left here. And it's an example of what Hackney put in place to yeah. uh, try to encourage and force uh, users to put them in, in sure. designated areas. Well, so that it, makes, seems it, to be... makes, it makes perfect sense. Absolutely. I mean, you've got a private company yeah. using public realm. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's create a management scheme to deal with this and not have it just be chaos. And you just need a couple of, uh, you know, car parking spaces on every street. Yeah. Um, and that will deal with the demand for most oh, places. Yeah. So, totally, yeah. You know, and and it, then it's a matter of, you know, the customers. You've got to treat, you know, <laughs> train the customers <laughs> from a behavior standpoint. Absolutely. Where to park them. Yeah, so it's, but again, it's, you know, it's, it's a new thing and uh, everyone will adapt and get used to it. But the, yeah. num the numbers are pretty amazing, you know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what they are, obviously, but yeah. just going around yeah. and seeing how many people are on line bikes, it's definitely in increased the, uh, the proportion of, of people who ride a bike in, yeah. in Hackney, whether they see themselves as cyclists or not, right. you know, who cares? Yeah. Um, I mean, just who, get, who needs a label? Are, well, you, right. are you a person on a bike? Just, just Beautiful, get, just brilliant. Get, get on a bike and uh, <laughs> yeah. see, see where it takes you. Yeah. But it's, it's probably also tied to, um, it's also tied to uh, the difficulties of owning a bike sometimes, mm -hmm. of, you know, where to keep it yep. um, in an urban place. is always, always a challenge. Yeah. Um, and also bike theft, which is a, you know, is an ongoing, issue in London as it is yeah. uh, in a lot of places, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, having that kind of flexibility to use a, use a higher bike just expands the options. Yeah. yeah. And for visitors as well, of course. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're, uh, the way I look at it, uh, and we have the same thing with both the, uh, the dockless uh, bikes as well as the scooters, right. um, the e-scooters, and, um, The way I look at it is, if it's a, a, a visitor, a tourist that is uh, you know, jumping on one of these uh, higher bikes, then you know that might be an Uber ride or a taxi ride that's yeah. not yeah. going to happen. For sure, for sure. This bit is um, was put in place a few years ago as part of an upgrade to Cycleway One mm -hmm. um, because you know this was kind of it would take left here. Sorry, yeah. Um, that was one of the breakpoints or the difficulties on the uh, on Cycleway One. Yeah. As, you know, we were just going through De Beauvoir, LTN. This is quiet, but we had that to deal with. Yeah. Um, so, so that kind of counter flow was put in place right. uh, a few years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, d a definite improvement for uh, for the less confident yeah. riders. Now up ahead here, I see just a, uh, looks like a, a newer facility. Well, this is a bridge which has just been replaced. Okay. So they uh, discovered, what was it 18 months ago, I think, uh -huh. uh, that it was basically rusting. Okay. And so they just closed it immediately after a, after a test, after a review of it. Um, and this is the replacement, which was opened maybe a month or two ago. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah. And prior to the closing and the replacement, was this a motor vehicle bridge or was it always a bike ped bridge? A long time ago, but um, it had been just a, a bike and pedestrian bridge for, yeah. I'm not sure what the time scale was. For some time. Um, the problem of it, Though the, the the kind of um, the fact that it wasn't safe and it had to close does highlight the issue of having kind of a back route yeah. for cycling because yeah. obviously you close Indeed. a bridge yes. there wasn't a an alternative yes, you know yeah. so the alternative that was put in place was substandard at yeah. best uh, we we kind of campaigned with it, the Islington Group um, to make a uh, to improve that yeah. which they did a little bit after a few months but it was still you know yeah. a long way be below below this yeah. so I mean given that you had to replace a bridge they did do it relatively quickly it probably took I can't remember uh, I think it was just over a year yeah. to do it 
Um, but um, but it does kind of highlight, you know, you would never close the biggest road in in Hackney for a year, right? right? right. Whereas you know you you can close the the biggest cycleway in Hackney for a year, and, right? You know. Well, and that's I'm gonna turn the the the, the on bike camera around and just you know kind of reflect on that. Is like we're used to on our motorways. Uh, pulling out the the emergency and pulling out the the uh, amazing efforts to try to do things quickly and come up with alternate routes a little bit of 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 respect for people walking and biking and using transit you know when you have to close an essential bridge like this that you know that same sort of spirit is is thought through and not just say oh they'll figure it out absolutely yeah, there's an, there's still an assumption that uh, you know they'll they'll find their own way, mm -hmm. it'll be okay. There's another route they can take. Yeah. It's like yeah, there there is, but it you know is right. it safe? Right. Is it pleasant? Is it yeah. you know is it? Yeah, that that 11 year old that yeah. you know used to go across here on their own to get to school and to get to their their friend's yeah. place. Seriously, that's what you're gonna do? You're gonna leave them hanging? Exactly. So, yeah. You know, and it was along that yeah. main road without any you know. And, and I think that's part of the framing too. And that's why I always come back to this, that it's all about all ages and abilities. It really is about stop ima imagining that this infrastructure is for quote unquote cyclists, you know, people who, you know, have, they're just out for, you know, for sport and recreation. When you, when you look at people who this is their essential means of, of transport, uh, you know, a, a person who may be disabled and can't walk very far, but can, can ride an adaptive cycle. Absolutely. And, you know, I had friends when this was closed, they live on the south side, they went to youth groups or, you know, whatever um, child activities they had on the north side, yeah. and suddenly, you know, they had all this extra stress to, to, yeah. uh, to undertake, or, you know, uh, taking a bus, you know, in the middle of winter, you really don't want to be on that yeah. road with and um, thinking about little kids. Yeah. So huge, huge props for a beautiful facility and getting it done and, and making that happen. And uh, yeah, we don't mean to over, be overly critical and criticized, no, but no, at the no, same time, we do need to do better when it comes to alternate routes during construction. It's just yeah. the point, yeah, during, yeah. during construction, you know, uh, I've been in the Netherlands on this big construction and they just, they close the roads. They, the literally, they literally will create uh, a pathway, yeah. 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 Which and oftentimes a protected, you know, uh, pathway protected. through con construction too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got so, some brilliant yeah. video of, of just that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All right, cool. Yeah, it's the approach, it's the mindset, um, not just seeing it as a added yeah. extra. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I think this is part of the construction as well in that they um, use this as the construction site. Oh yeah. Which was greenery, but you can see the kind of graphics on the side. Oh they're gonna right, yeah, they're gonna make a little Redo little green that space. as a park. Yeah. Little pocket park of sorts. So we're still on cycleway one here, and this little stretch we're coming to is one of the areas where we've kind of been asking for improvements for a long time, ever since it was put in. It's really not, you know, they haven't done anything to it, essentially. Yeah. It's not an acceptable cycleway. Yeah. Um, there are plans, you go, it's just turn green. You can see they just built um, some lanes up here. That's that's kind of within the last few months. Um, but yeah, so this this is the kind you know this is a cycleway. Obviously, not good enough. Right. Um, and this is the main cycleway in Hackney. Okay. You know, you would not. That, that's not a serious cycleway, right? Right. So we've got some really good bits into speed with, with this kind of bit. Yeah. Um, Islington did put plans out last year uh, to uh, essentially block the traffic in one direction and to remove one side of the parking. Right. Uh, we'll take a left after this. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully that will. Next time you're in London, it will be, it will be change will be different um, but I don't know where that consultation is at the minute where those plans are and then we're back into a protected LTN yeah. and you can instantly just feel how you yeah, know yeah. you're just more relaxed and uh, 
bikes don't have to worry. Yeah. Um, and all this stretch, when the cycleway was put in or designated, there were little bits done. Right. And then a couple of years later, they came back and closed another couple of roads. Yeah, yeah. And then, so it's, it, it, took, it took a while. Um, but this stretch at least now is, is good. Yeah, very, very pleasant. Again, you feel that stress level go down right away. Absolutely. And then we're coming to a uh, stretch now, which used to be a road. Again, it's gone through a few iterations over time. Yeah. I'm not sure when it was first closed, but you'll see the um, trees. They've obviously been there for yeah. a yeah, few no, years. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, So this used to be a through through road for motorcyclists as well, uh, for motor motor vehicles as well. Right. So obviously it's been been like this for a while. Let's uh, pull over for a moment here. So previously, uh, in 2020, they put planters here um, and closed closed this off, and then they've just put this these new rain gardens in okay. last earlier this year okay. um, so it's just been open a couple of months really oh really okay um, with this new kind of more permanent paving the issue is is that it's very busy with cycling and, and pedestrians yeah. especially in the morning for for schools so they kind of have really tightened this corner up right. uh, in order to try to slow cyclists down and then right. put these ridiculous right. signage which keep on getting knocked down. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a, I don't know, not overly pleased with it. Um, yeah. It's almost like trying to, to make it too automobile, yeah. infrastructure I, I oriented. Mean, the, the, the yellow kind of big signs, yeah. it, it does look like it, yeah. they belong on a motorway rather yeah. than a yeah. small. Whereas yeah. on this side, you know, the, this, this, new, this new rain yeah. garden thing, um, Maybe because it's not on a curve, they That's felt it. like you know they yeah. could just leave it like that and it's fine. Exactly. Um, Whereas okay. this, they've just yeah really tightened it. So when you, yeah. if we stood here for long enough and you have people coming both ways, you can yeah. you know you see people just go on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we sometimes we um, you know it's you, you know the term uh, car brain right. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we're just, we're so wrapped up in car brain. That's what it feels so, like. That's yeah. what it feels like. I don't yeah. know, you know. They say they had to do something to slow down cyclists on here when it's busy. Mm -hmm. um, what it seems to have done is, is kind of push cyclists onto another part of the pavement, sure. you know, instead. But uh, I don't know. It's not disastrous, but it's, uh, they've obviously spent a lot of money and I'm not sure they've, it's actually been improved other than yeah. making it look a bit nicer there. Well, it, one of the telltale ways of, of slowing a cyclist down, a person on a bike down when they're riding into an area that is like this is a, is a rather tight two-way cycle track. And so, you know, certainly using materials, pavers that, that will, you know, send that same message to a driver when yeah. you're on a cobblestone street. It's like, oh, this is a slow street area. This yeah. is a slow area. I'd say leave it at that and, and, yeah. and go with it and, and don't overthink it. Yeah. But yeah, this is car brain mentality, overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, it's the yellow signs that I just yeah. don't, um, it's just, it, it's it just, com it looks like a motorway, doesn't it? It's yeah, just, yeah. you know. Well, they're massive. That, I've, that never seen, like, I've never yeah. seen that on a cycleway before. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, clearly, um, somebody was like, they're going too fast. <laughs> well, I think there is a primary school up the road, so I think yeah. people were, you know. And, yeah, yeah. You know, you do have cyclists yeah. that go too fast. Yeah. For the conditions, yeah. I, yeah. I get all of that. Yeah, I mean, probably had to do something, and um, especially in an area here where this is this is a pedestrian realm too, and so you've got an intersection uh, to a pedestrian realm and all that. So you know, yeah, people 
you know, if, if we don't want to see our cycle tracks, you know, littered with automobile infrastructure and signage, at some level, yeah, you know, we have to have the responsibility as people riding bikes to slow the frick down yeah. when you're in a mixing area with yeah. pedestrians. You, I mean, you got kids, you know, in this area too. So do yourselves a favor, guys. You know, if you're, if you're late for work routinely, leave a little earlier so you don't have to push so hard. Well, it'll cost, it'll cost you 10 seconds here, maximum, yeah, exactly. right? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just yeah. chill out, yeah. <laughs> slow down. Right, Although cool. you do you do see pedestrians just walking onto this because there's not much of a difference, right? Yeah. Well, the the color differentiation just isn't there. You know, and that's the brilliant thing about uh, the Dutch is, you know, for instance, you see the the red pavers over there where this says slow. If you continued that color right through here, you know, it would have made much more sense. I'm not a professional, you know, traffic engineer or yeah. anything like that, but. I think if there's one thing they could do just yeah. to standardize things throughout the country or at least yeah. throughout London, yeah. just use the red that, you know, that yeah. is already widely in place in use in yeah. uh, other countries. Yeah. In the Netherlands, you see red, yeah. you know, whether you're in a car, whether you're cycling, whether yeah. you're walking, you know exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, there's no kind of fudge like this. Yeah. There's no c confusion. Yeah. You know, you enter a road as a driver yeah. with red, um, tarmac and yeah. you know that you're going slow. Yeah, you're right? going slow and yeah. you should expect that you're going to yeah. see people on Yeah, bikes. and when there's no red, yeah. go for it, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're on a... Go, go for it up to the speed limit of that street, Absolutely. which but is probably 30 kilometers per hour anyway, so yeah. slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you just know that actually you'd probably, if you see a cyclist, yeah. probably just stay behind them. Yes. Whereas we, yeah. you know, because we don't have that, I think, yeah, yeah. It makes such a difference. Yeah. And also for pedestrians, because you, they do just wander on to... Yeah. Um, so I, I, I certainly, I can't, I can't at all complain or uh, criticize pedestrians for, for walking into this pathway, because Absolutely. to them, the design says that this is their continuous realm. And so, yeah, okay. yeah, it, 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 is, it is a design thing. And I get that, that this was an extremely expensive uh, amount of stonework that went down and so in retrospect that's kind of what the plastic is is an admission that we kind of messed up the design and so we're trying to to put a band-aid on it get it got it so but to your point yeah let's how about some consistency you know about yeah. to the color scheme yeah. yeah yeah and not the not the bright Obnoxious blue. Blue, yeah. Is that is that dead or, or is, or I, is I it? I think that's dead. I yeah, think that's yeah, dead. Yeah. yeah, that was a short-lived thing. Yeah, yeah. Live yeah. and learn, I suppose. But well, um, I mean, you're copying uh, Copenhagen. You know, they right, have the blue. Okay. Yeah, I've not yeah. been to Copenhagen. Yeah, that's yeah. That's where the blue comes from. Right. Yeah. So we've just seen some of the more p the permanent uh, rain gardens they've put in. We'll just go through a couple of uh, the plant filters here as well. Yeah. Uh, so these are the the temporary things that are now being upgraded one by one. Right. And you'll also notice as we go through how many uh, cycle parking kind of uh, bins that they've put in. Right. So these are for residents. Uh, you apply for one, uh, you pay, I can't remember how much it is, but you pay for a, for a space and a key in one of those. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things Hackney have really uh, uh, got a big project on. I think they're installing, I think it's 80 or 90 per quarter, so okay. kind of getting up to maybe th uh, three to 400 a year right. um, on streets around Hackney because the demand is there. The policy was to try to deal with all of the, all of the demand, right. essentially, because uh, there's been a big, big waiting list for a long time. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if you're living in an upstairs flat, it's obviously difficult to haul your bike up. Right. Well, and when we think of, of parking, too, I mean, around the globe, one of the biggest challenges is the minimum parking requirements for automobiles. That's something in Hackney you, uh, you don't have. Yeah, those, um, again, I'm not sure of the date, but uh, going back a couple of decades, I think, um, the planning department put in a stipulation that any new housing couldn't have um, 
car parking associated with it. Right. So yeah, car-free development has been a thing in Hackney for a long time. Right. So the expectation is if you know if you move into a new uh, into a new housing development in Hackney is that you don't you don't get um, a parking space a parking right. permit essentially. So so yeah, that kind of helps. Obviously, the main the main driver behind that is right. the space. Yeah. Um, there's a housing crisis that we we all know about in London and you know many other cities in the, in the world. Yeah. Prices are just through the roof. Um, and so, do you want to dedicate the space that you do have to building yeah. to cars, or do you want to actually put more units in there? So, yeah. yeah so that's that's a big thing that Hackney, I think, pioneered a long time ago. So that's just you know it's just an accepted. Yeah, it's accepted now. Uh, same with businesses. Is it the same uh, uh, requirements for businesses? I am not sure what the requirement is for businesses and whether that's a. I would what assume that is. it's. I assume so. Yeah. I, I mean, looking at these businesses up ahead, I'm not seeing a pro proliferation of uh, no. of <laughs> surface parking for them. No, so, no. and um, there's control parking zones (CBZs) yeah. which cover the whole borough essentially. Okay. Which means, you know, if you have a parking permit, you can park within that zone, but you can't park elsewhere. Oh wow! Okay, what do we have here? So this is Church Street, which I mentioned. Yeah. So this is the street. You'll see the independent um, shops all along, loads of cafes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, and so this is where the we'll go through the bus gate uh, just to our left. Um, yeah, previously this would have been a mate, it's a B road, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, uh, so it's on the kind of road classification. So this is probably the biggest road that Hackney have um, put a bus gate on so far. Okay. And the, the, the two classifications for the urban streets are the A roads, which are the busier multi-lane faster roads and then the B roads where there's still automobile infrastructure but right. it, it, it's not quite as intense. Is that, right. is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And then everything else is uh, unclassified. Unclassified, yeah. yeah. So, so to do something on this scale on a, on a B road is, um, I think this probably was the, the first B road that I'm aware of to, to have that kind of right. um, infrastructure. The city have done similar yeah. um, outside Liverpool Street Station. Yeah. Uh, which again was major, um, but yeah, but you, uh, we'll we'll ride along this. But you'll see how busy it is with pedestrians mm -hmm. and how narrow the pavements were. Yeah. Previously, before the bus gate, it just wasn't a really nice experience because the pavements are so narrow. Right. Even though you know you wanted to be here for the amenities yeah. along it, yeah. it wasn't a, a nice experience. Yeah. Whereas again, you know, the quiet that you can just feel and uh, hear and feel as we. Yeah as we go along it's just trans trans transformed and you can see the filters uh, on the other side as well so they, they put those in to, to restrict the north-south um, yeah. traffic as well. I also want to uh, point out too that we're, we're standing here in front of a uh, continuous uh, pathway here on the pavement really done in nice pavers you can see across the street there where the pedestrians crossing again the same thing that continuous elevation uh, slowing down motor vehicles. It sends that message to the motor, ve motor vehicle driver that when they're entering these side streets, if they're allowed to enter the side streets, uh, it's, it's a pedestrian first realm. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's, um, so maybe a year or two after they put the bus gate in, mm -hmm. they went around and extended a lot of the pavements actually. So because, you know, making use of the um, additional space that they, that they had, it's, you know, giving, giving more space back to pedestrians. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that makes it a, a much more pleasant environment for everybody. Uh, people on bikes, people, you know, uh, you know walking, and, and honestly, it's, it's better for drivers too because it, it sends a clear message to what your behavior should be. And also with the, you know, the number of um, cafes and, and restaurants along here, it's so much more pleasant to sit outside. Yeah. More pleasant to shop along yeah. along here. So you, you know, you, surely you're more likely to, uh, to to spend more time here yeah. um, than you were previously. Yeah. Um, so it's still a busy uh, bus route, and you can see cars can still park. They can still come along here, yeah. but they can't go all the way through. Great. Okay. Let's go explore.
So this is the actual uh, the actual bus gate, the signs for it, seven till seven, except for permit holders. And we've got a bus behind, so I might just go behind you and let him overtake. Yeah, so there were kind of uh, protests and complaints saying that, you know, businesses would suffer, that they would uh, move away, that they wouldn't, and including some of the businesses that Bakery just there uh, complained uh, quite heavily about it before, before it was yeah. put in place. Yeah, so it's still, you know, it's, it's with buses, so it's not, uh, you wouldn't want very, very small kids doing it maybe, right. but, yeah. um, but it certainly expands the demographic of people who would be comfortable along there. Right. So we're now, this is uh, Clissold Park, which you can go through, uh, and then into Finsbury Park, there's other nice routes there, and we will take a left here. You go to other places in London and you realise how much Hackney has done. Yeah. And more and more places, you know, there are those boroughs who, who are doing equally, equally good things now. Yeah. Um, but they were catching up from a standing start. Right. Um, we did a lot during COVID. Since then, the pace has definitely slowed quite a lot. So Church Street was maybe three years ago. That was the last major, major change. Okay. Um, so it's been kind of frustratingly slow since then, yeah. in some ways. Um, it's not like they've done nothing, but we've kind of been asking for, and we know there are plans for several new LTNs, yeah. but they just haven't come to fruition yet. Right. Um, and I think that's partly due to some political kind of changes that we've had um, uh, and also maybe capacity at the council to, to finalise and per make permanent what was already there right. alongside kind of creating new, new things. Yeah, yeah. There, are good, there are big good projects in the works um, so we know there's some good, good things coming right. uh, but it's about you know but you want to see them now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you kind of, you know, you're on the streets and you know what, what should happen, go yeah. left here. Yeah, yeah. What needs to happen and what would be there, right. what would be beneficial. But just along here, you can see kind of three cycle hangers there. There's one or two more down there. Yeah. In some boroughs, you know, you're lucky to, to find five throughout right. the whole borough, whereas Hackney have got several hundred in place and they're building them out re really quickly. And it just makes a big difference and it's just, yeah. Taking out some parking one by one as well yeah. for, for motor vehicles. So we're back at this, uh, yeah. this junction. Yeah, let's see how we fare, see if yeah, we survive. Well, yeah. <laughs> Follow the big yellow signs. <laughs> So this is a new route that uh, TFL are just about completing. So it goes from Dalston, which is where we are now, um, to Lee Bridge Roundabout, which is completed uh, earlier this year, and then over to Waltham Forest and to join up with all the infrastructure in, in Waltham. So the final bit uh, of this particular uh, cycleway is to put a crossing in here. Yeah. Uh, which was supposed to be in place by now. It was supposed to start in February. It's now supposed to start uh, in June. So hopefully at the end of the month they will start. Um, so obviously it's, it's required to, to cross this uh, road, Kingsland Road. And then we'll get into LTNs and then onto some nice, um, 
cycleways that you know already. Yeah. But, yeah. And now we're into in Dalston. This is one area where we've been campaigning for a few years to try to put in an LTN. Mm -hmm. um, there's a kind of strong local campaign have been working on it for a long time. As you can see how wide the roads are and yeah. cars do speed along here um, during the week. So yeah, it's it's not ideal at the minute. It's kind of uh, used as a cut through from east to, east to west. So yeah, that's this is one of the areas we're hoping to get some uh, solid plans in quite soon. But it is very frustrating for the people, for the local campaigners, you know, who are working on it for a couple of years and they've been promised, promised that there's something on the way. Yeah. But it's, uh, it feels a long wait when it's kind of two years and your kids are growing up and <laughs> during that time and right. all the rest of it, so, yeah. And typically when you have a street that's this wide, will this, get some sort of a treatment that'll be an actual cycleway? Uh, no, this will probably just be kept as it is pretty much. But just put those, put, put the kind of filters in and the rain guarders in and at particular entrances. Right. Um, or in the middle to just, yeah, to prevent the, uh, the cut to prevent through, the cut through and the, the through traffic. Yeah, and just leave it at that. Because if you did put a cycleway in, you'd have to eliminate parking more than likely. Yeah, no, there's, and the cost of it. Yeah. Um, but also you don't get, if you just put a cycleway in, yeah. right here, so you don't get the, you know, you don't get the wider benefits right. of the quieter streets. Right. So, you know, so on the big roads, then absolutely you need, you need protected cycleways, but on roads like this, yeah, just cut the through traffic and, yeah, yeah. and you're good to go. Yeah, on these narrower streets, when you have parking on both sides, the narrowness, you know, creates its own traffic calming as well. It does, it does. But it's also, you know, the behavior, it's dependent on the behavior of the drivers, isn't it? You know, you have some who hold back yeah. and some who let you go, you yeah. know, whereas otherwise, you get some who come onto your side of the road as they're coming towards you. Sure, sure. And they think you have to get out of their way because they're in the bigger vehicle, despite being on your, yeah. your side of the road, or they're right back, you know. Well, I mean, we could say the same thing, you know, a subset of the driving population Absolutely. are also rude to other drivers too. Yes. <laughs> and they're the ones that, you know, take that type of narrowness and try to use their aggression. Oh, no this, no uh, complaints. Wild meadow. Oh yeah, I've not seen that before. Very nice. Yeah. Nice pollinators meadow. Wildflowers. Lots of poppies. Yeah. So, you had mentioned that you were able to go to Paris for a little bit. Any key takeaways from your visit there to Paris that you brought back with you here to Ac Acne? To go left. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we were kind of blown away how quickly they put their things in. Yeah. Whereas, um, I mean, I'm sure, I know they had big protests and lawsuits about some of their major early ones. Right. So we knew they had gone in. Yeah. There had been big changes. What I wasn't expecting was the scale of the other ones and how, yeah. how many other um, roads had been transformed. Um, and obviously I don't, I yeah, never lived in Paris. Sure, sure. Um, so there's, I'm sure there are kind of dissenting voices, but they had done it at a scale that, uh, at a speed that we, we put, well, in Hackney, we saw that kind of speed during COVID, yeah. you know, for maybe six or nine months. Yeah. Um, but it's not the normal speed that we do things here. Yeah. And, and also some of the treatments that they had in Paris, yeah. TfL would not sign off here in right. London. You know, they were much more kind of, you know, temporary in scale and yeah. more kind of uh, risky, I suppose, or, sure. or, or not. Shoehorning it in, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, and just uh, putting something in. And whereas I think in, in TFL would have, have to, would have made it more uh, 
definite before putting anything in kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. so I think it's probably a diff slight different culture in terms of traffic management, I suppose, uh, health and safety maybe. Um, but yeah, they were definitely doing things very quickly there. Mm -hmm. So down there, we won't go there now, but um, is a really, it's called uh, the Pembury Junction, yeah. <clears throat> Pembury Circus. It's a very confusing uh, junction. Five, it's called Five Points. Five, um, five entrances uh, to it. So it's a very kind of difficult junction in many ways, but uh -huh. it is, it's a horrible experience on your bike. <laughs> um, Hackney do have, they did, they did, did bid for some central government money to improve it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the major projects that Hackney are working on in the minutes that we're hoping to, to see designs of um, as soon as the election's done right. and they're allowed to, to uh, publish some, some new, new designs. Uh, the plans are to uh, implement a new bus gate in Hackney Central just by the town hall. Okay. which would be transformative for that area. Right. Um, it is a major road. Yes, it is. Um, compared to, you know, we saw the B road at Church, Church Street. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of bigger than that. And okay. it's a very busy bus route. Um, so hopefully it would speed up those, those bus routes as well. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the kind of major project that Hackney are working on in the minute and we're trying to trying to uh, ensure that it's as high quality as possible for, for cycling um, and for everyone else obviously. Yeah, so this is most main roads in Hackney, no cycling provision. Um, if we're lucky we might have a cycling sign on the ground. Quite often there is a bus lane, um, not always, but you know that's, it's not cycling infrastructure, it's better than nothing. Um, some some campaigners kind of think it's good enough, uh, it's, but it's not really good enough for kind of 80 to 80 cycling. Right. Um, but yeah, we're coming, gonna come up to the Lee Bridge roundabout, which uh, TfL put in place earlier this year, which is seg seg separate, segregated. So we're coming up to uh, the start of it now, so we can, See it on the other side of the road, and we'll go left here onto the se separated area. Let's stop. Yeah, it's it's very smooth. You can tell this was a big build. It's quite the project, huh? Yeah, it's a big project. I mean, there's so much, because there's a bike garage essentially in the middle of the roundabout. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of space that they're taking up. Yeah. Um, but then also in between design and implementation, this area to the west here um, was created into an LTN. So this road now is probably way bigger than it needs to be. Right. Um, because the LTN is in place now when it was and when it was designed. Right. Um, but yeah, I guess once, once the design has been done and the funds have been approved, it's a big task to change the, those kind of things. This is clearly automobile infrastructure yeah. with us getting a little bits. <laughs> yeah, trying to go through the red light there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's clearly, you know, built for, for cars still, but you know, you have this segregation. You'd allow, I'd allow my child to come along this, whereas previously yeah. you would never have done that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's made a big difference. Yeah. And then this, this uh, goes straight down into Waltham Forest. And onto Hack Hackney Marshes. Um, yeah. And also it provides that, uh, there's the option as well because if you you can either go direct across the roundabout now which was you know would have been closed off for many cyclists before or you can take uh, left up here and there's you know quite a nice ltn through there as well that take you um into hackney as well so both depending where you go and whether you want a quicker route or take a left here um 
a faster route or a quieter route, you can you have options, which I think is you know it's important. Yeah. So up ahead here, we have a little uh, nod to the Dutch. We have a red tarmac. We have a red tarmac. Yes. If only we had that tarmac everywhere. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is this is this is brand new. I think uh, maybe 18 months. Oh wow! So it's that new, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this this path wasn't here at all previously. So this is the west. Uh, it's the eastbound route and on the opposite side right. they're just finishing the eastbound route um, I mean people use this going both ways because it's wide enough and quiet enough to do that at the minute yeah. Um, but yeah you can see there's some some of the kind of controversial uh, bus gate uh, bus stop bypasses mm -hmm. being built along there as well mm -hmm. Yeah, previously the road would have been three lanes of traffic uh, and it's been restricted to two lanes with a, uh, with a cycle track instead, so yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we're just happy as clams over here. Absolutely. So we're, we're, we're loving it. Yeah. And just to have that little bit of separation just makes the world a difference, isn't it, in terms of noise um, as you go ahead? Yeah, it doesn't. You don't. You don't need much, right? You know, it's just a little bit of separation. You've got the beautiful big trees through here. Um, yeah, I mean, the the cars are literally right there, but it's still the world of difference. I know where I would want to go. Yeah. Right, I'd rather ride on this than out over there. <laughs> and then we've just passing the, uh, the canal, the river, the Lee, Lee River now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's nice routes up, up um, to the north there, mm -hmm. which are obviously off away from traffic, and then also continuing east here and then to the south is LTN so yeah it's yeah. kind of compared to where we were 10 years ago it's we've we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of improvements yeah. in terms of infrastructure and again transitioning back onto a nice red tarmac here Nice red tarmac, separated. Yeah, I mean, London doesn't, you know, obviously this amount of space isn't, isn't normal in much of London, mm -hmm. um, but they've made a, but previously it wasn't here at all. Right. You know, on the left, you've got a new ice rink um, and a whole lot of greenery, so yeah. Yeah, if you've got this amount of space, then make use of it. And again, this, this infrastructure, folks, this is cheap. You can build this on pennies on the dollar compared to automobile infrastructure. Automobile infrastructure is real expensive. Yeah. This is high quality and yet, you know, still yeah. quite affordable compared to And I think to the that. only expensive bits are, I'm not sure if this bridge was new or, or, str or widened. But yeah, again, compared to, because they don't have to take any, you know, any weight at all really compared to a motor traffic bridge, yeah. then the cost is obviously going to be much, much, much smaller. And the great thing that Waltham Forest have done is that when you, if you continue onto this and onto the next junction, you can go on any leg of that junction on a separated route just like this. Right. Gets a bit narrower yeah. as you get to the high yeah. street, but it's still separated. It's it's time to say goodbye. You you have to get off to an event, correct? Yeah, well, my daughter's playing um, final game of the season, so uh, she can win the league, so oh, I've got to wow. get there. In the running, fantastic. Got to win. Thank you so very much. This has been an absolute joy and pleasure uh, showing me around. Uh, any, any final words, anything you'd like to leave the audience with? Um, I guess, you know, it's worth, it's worth fighting for this kind of stuff. When it's done well, it can change um, how people go about living their lives. You know, it just makes things easier, uh, leads to better health outcomes. Um, you know, it's just, just make improvements. 
Um, it's good stuff. It's not easy to put in sometimes. There's a lot of opposition, but it's, uh, it's worth the fight. Love it, love it. Well, carry on. Great okay. job. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.